My name is Stephen Garish. We uh, have a family farm in Park County, Indiana, near Rockville. It's been in our family since 1904, and I'm the fourth generation farming. We've got a couple other generations getting ready to move into the farming. So we farm about uh, around five to 600 acres with our pastures and stuff that we farm and our row crops. We do corn, soybeans, and then a, a hay for cattle. We have a cow-calf operation. And we do uh, aquaculture with, um, uh, we've got three different uh, water features that we use for aquaculture too. So we looked at what we were doing and said, what, what if we wanted to farm alternate crops and, and get labor taken care of on the market? What would that look like? Well, the first thing we wanted to do was look at uh, if we had internet access, high-speed internet access, what, what could we do on the farm? So we actually spent it about two years getting a fiber ran to our farm and popped it up on a, uh, a broadband method. So for a couple miles out, we could put up up to gigabyte internet access out there. And so trying to figure it out and demonstrate what could be done, we were looking for ideas and we, we were promoting the idea of rural broadband. And, one of the things you're supposed to do to create a vision is to do a symbolic event. And so our symbolic event mer uh, melded into the AgBot Challenge. And the AgBot Challenge, we, we started thinking about, you know, if we had that, how would we operate our farm and what machinery would we need and can we do it economically? So that's kind of how we evolved the Purdue AgBot Challenge. Okay. Monitoring of animals, um, watching the crops, being able to communicate with the drones, uh, and, and seeing things. Um, we, we really, we haven't incorporated a lot of them yet. We're just starting to because we've been trying to figure out which ones made economic sense for us as farmers, right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, reporting and guidance, the teams over the last three years have come up with wonderful ideas. Uh, one of the teams, um, uh, two of the teams kind of joined forces and started a new company called Sabanto, and they're out uh, planting acreage right now. They plan to plant 10,000 acres this year and 100,000 next year with an autonomous tractor and planter. And, and they actually, one was a judge on their, our AgBot challenge, the other was a winner. So they're actually going to be planting uh, 10 to 20 percent of my acreage this year. So. So that in itself is an exact example of what we're talking about. One of our biggest weaknesses in agriculture is we have about 1% of the population now farming. We have uh, a flat-lined research budget for ag. As an example, uh, the military spent $2 billion on the DARPA challenge. This is Ag's DARPA challenge, right? It's less than $2 billion. It's so Quite a bit. Quite a bit, right? <laughs> yeah. So, wow, what, what would have happened in Ag if we had $2 billion bucks to do automation in Ag instead of killing other people? Wouldn't that be great? So, we did what we could and we said, okay, we're gonna give out 100,000 in prizes. And what we ended up with, all of these teams coming to us, they're all spending money. And we're looking very much for farmer-centric solutions. I think the biggest thing we've maybe helped is bringing together the sponsors and the academics. When I say sponsors, I'm saying large corporate ag folks, bringing them together to look at farmer-centric solutions. As a farmer, I'm interested in helping me, right? I don't want to carry seed bags and dump them anymore. It hurts my back, right? I don't want to ride the tractor all the time. I need information from the field, but I need help acting on the information, and I don't want to pay somebody to do it. I'd rather have a tool that would help me do that. That's what we're looking at. And in, and in doing that, you do disrupt some methods in agriculture, but it's time we kind of shook the bushes a little bit too, and brought some fresh insight into what we're doing. Right? Artificial intelligence in identifying the weeds in driving the vehicles. You know, we're, we're seeing it happen in automobiles and trucks now. The public is accepting it. We've been trying this in ag for some time. We've had auto steer. 
but now we're taking it to the next level and the general public is assuming it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. So by, by using artificial intelligence and, and uh, machine learning and neural networks, these young folks are coming in and helping us solve our problems and our thought processes on the farm. It's kind of flattering because as a farmer, you've been doing this your whole life, right? But to convert that to domain intelligence so that you can pass it on uh, to your next couple of generations and have that knowledge captured for them, I think that's just cool. Yeah, you know what's, what's really cool is a lot of the younger folks are more interested in a, a social mission and feeling like they're doing something to help the world. And when you start talking about our food supply and the safety of that, and maybe cutting down on our chemical usage for farming. These kids are really interested in that idea. And I think it's fun watching them come to agriculture with solutions and this venue gives them that opportunity. And we need that fresh thought in agriculture, I believe, personal okay. opinion. And that creates the uncommon collaboration, right? Each of these teams, I mean, the Virginia Tech team has a nematologist, you know, a farmer, a professor, kids that have a social mission, want to reduce chemicals, want to use artificial intelligence, want to work in robotics, and they all come together. I think there are 35 kids working on this out in Virginia Tech. Purdue has some, a huge group of folks working on things. It's, it's fantastic. We need that thought, thought process in agriculture. I, I've been concerned about it and I don't know how to do it any more than working with Purdue to demonstrate you can do that. And I think Purdue is taking a very active, proactive solution for that by partnering with us to do this contest. We've talked about it for a number of years and we want to maintain the same commercial interest and let that help guide their research. And, and Purdue probably has more commercial relationships than a lot of the land grant colleges. And I think they're very receptive to this and we've got some wonderful champions here. And we'll see over time. And, and we hope that they can. We hope that they can continue to invite uh, folks to come to Indiana to uh, instill fresh thought in some of the things we're working on.